nothing but a town hall where people have a chance to come here to City Hall and express your feelings, ask questions, and get an idea of what's going on. Uh, well, you can take our, our thoughts and everything back to the council, though, right? Am I wrong? Uh, I could, but the best thing to do is I try to... The council is busy, and that's what I assume. And it, you have to remember, sometimes if we get more than four council people in one spot, people have a tendency to claim that we're having a meeting, meeting and we try to stay from that. And, and I'd like to, to uh, just let everybody know the council is interested, so is the mayor. This is just something I thought that it needed to be brought out and discussed and a chance for the people who live here to get an idea how we stop this and keep from it spreading and just doing the right thing. It's called transparency. I'm not afraid of it. There's no reason to hide it. Let's fix it. We're not the only city folks. I've got a speaker here tonight I'm sure is going to tell you that we are not the only city. I've heard from Allen Park. I've heard from Southgate. We've all got problems. The only difference is we're going to fix it. We're not going to let it get out of control. And with the winter coming on, we definitely want to get it fixed. Next thing you know, they'll be hiding everywhere they can hide. So basically, this is going to be a lot of questions and answers, because that's what it's about. It's about you. Not about me. It's about you. I'm not a rat person, although in my 28, 38 years as a cop, I chased a lot of rats. But they had two legs. But today we're talking about a problem that we're having. Is it a major problem? Do I really know? No. Do we get a few calls on it? Yes, we do. But the idea is it gives you a chance to come here, hear what's going on, find a way to us to work together, and put a halt to it before it gets out of control. Because that's the last thing we would like to really have happen. Okay? Is there any questions anyone has of me for right now before we get started? Okay, good. Feel free at any time to contact me. If I can help you in any way, please feel free to call. The people of the city elected me. That's why I'm here. And I'm more than happy to step up and do the job you gave me in this city. Okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have three speakers. And they're each going to provide information on ways that they deal with stopping the problem. Now, there will be, you'll be allowed to ask any questions that you would like to, to ask. And don't, feel free to ask. Nobody's going to bite you. If we don't get the questions and you don't have your input, how do we know what's going on? And that's pretty much why we're doing this. So, our first guest speaker is, will be Kim Good. She's from uh, Paul and TNR, and she's going to talk about feral cats and how feral cats have been involved in this. And from my understanding, this wouldn't be the only city that you have feral cats. I don't know that much about it. That's why she's going to talk about it. If you have questions about it, ask. That's the only way. Don't walk out of here and say, I should have asked that question. There is no dumb question. I think we've all heard that story before. It's the question you didn't ask, that you were afraid to ask, that later becomes, oops, I made a big deal. Okay? Kim, please. Hi, my name is Kim Good, and um, I'm the president of Paws for TNR. And uh, what we are is we are a group that helps raise money for people to get feral cats spayed and neutered, vaccinated, and taking care of medical problems, as well as food um, and shelter. Uh, we also do educational things to teach about TNR. And so I guess the first thing I'd like to um, say is that if you're ever out and you see a cat and the left ear has been tipped off, the top third has been cut straight across, that cat is now being cared by what we call as a caregiver. And that means that that cat has been spayed or neutered. The cat has been vaccinated so it, cannot, um, it doesn't have rabies. It won't have any diseases that can spread to people or other cats. And um, the main thing is that 
somebody is taking care of that cat. They are feeding that cat, watching um, and seeing if there is any medical issues that need to be taken care of and things like that. Um, what TNR stands for is trap, neuter, and return. Um, trapping is we take a live trap and we stay with the trap at all times and we would catch these cats that we call feral cats. They could, um, what a feral cat is, is a cat that we consider wild. That it has been out in the wild, maybe the cat was born out in the wild, maybe its grandparents and its parents were born out in the wild, and now it is considered a wild animal. <clears throat> Excuse me, like such as a rabbit or a squirrel. Um, there are also what we call community cats. And what these cats are, are basically what I call throwaways. I hate to say it like that, but when people move from an apartment or they no longer want the cat or they've had a baby or, or they have allergies, they don't always do the right thing and take them to the shelter. Instead, they just leave them outside and walk away. Um, so some of these cats might be nice. The feral cats, if they are completely feral, they will not come up to you, so you don't have to worry about them biting your children or your grandchildren or yourself. The community cats, um, these are cats that have been left behind, and depending on how old or how long they've been in the wild depends on how tame they are. If a cat doesn't want to be petted and it runs off, please do not go after the cat because you don't know what the background is on the cat. Um, so we would try to trap these cats. We'd get them vaccinated, and most importantly, we'd get them um, neutered or spayed. And what that means is that they no, could no longer produce any more cats. So that will cut down on the amount of cats that are running around. Um, and then we return them. So there the R is in TNR, and we return them back to where we found them. We do not relocate them. We return them to where they're from. That is where those cats are familiar with. That is their home, whether what we think about it. That is what they call home. By the time they're five or six weeks old, the mothers have already taught the kittens where to get food and where to get shelter. Um, so basically, we all know that when we have cats, Cats are natural predators for mice and rats. Um, so if we have these feral cats, and they're all um, been TNR, they've all been neutered, we know that they aren't going to make any more babies, so we just have to deal with those cats. At that time, they're going to be natural um, mousers and ratters, and um, they will take care of a lot of our issues that we have and that is without using any pesticides. Um, some people are totally against pesticides, and um, some of the reasons might be that, um, say that they have um, a dog outside and it happens to get a mouse, and it's, been, and it's ate some poison, well then that dog could eat this mouse and possibly get sick if not die. So um, this is one of the reasons that we think it's a green solution. And I know that we don't want cats everywhere, so that's why I'm an advocate in getting them spayed and neutered. It also cuts down on noise. A lot of times during mating season, cats get very loud, so people don't want to hear that. They don't want to keep having all these different cats show up and keep showing up. And if they're fixed, they will no longer reproduce. I have one lady in the city of Taylor that takes care of 80 cats. She has done this for 14 years. In the 14 years after she's gotten these cats spayed and neutered, they have not reproduced. They have not brought any new cats into the communities. And this lady has offered shelter, which um, can be made out of styrofoam and put into containers or you can also make something. There's a lot of resources as to how to make um, something. If you'd like to see me afterwards, I'd be more than happy to go over with. Yes. 
You mean she's got any cats in her residence? No, no, no. She takes care of them at different locations. Oh, okay. So, for instance, I'm, I'm just going to throw out some places, but for instance, she has behind a car dealership. Mm -hmm. So, she has talked to the owners there and let them know that she's taking care of these cats. She goes by, <clears throat> she goes by daily and she feeds them and waters them throughout the winter, every day of the year, snow, whatever the weather is. And she goes to these different locations throughout the Down River community and takes care of these cats. And when they eventually die off, they're gone. Um, but now if a whole community of cats are gone, it's what we call a vacuum effect. If there's no other cats from that community, there will then be new cats that will come in and kind of take over that area. Um, a lot of people um, have seen it. It's true, it does happen. So cats are, we're never going to get rid of all the cats. I don't care if you, every cat that was seen and taken and trapped, I could guarantee it would be almost 50% more. Um, the other thing is, is that, um, that if um, you go out into the city and um, you see these black boxes, um, I, one of my girls, they found one of the black boxes where evidently a cat must have been trying to get some food and there was rat poisoning in it and um, they found the cat not far away. So I'm assuming that that happened as well. Um, but this is just one of the things that we would like to see happen in the city of Taylor and all the Down River communities to allow this to go on as far as being able to take care of these cats so that it can help take care of the um, mouse and rat population. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Yeah. You said we could make our own. Then where would we get the feral cats put in? Um, if you have a feral cat. Okay, we don't have any. You don't have any? Okay. We need some. You, need some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I believe it or not, there's probably some there. You just haven't seen them. We just took care of a situation um, over at one of our halls in the city, and um, a, a lady had passed away, and her, all of her cats were there, um, and we were able to trap the cat. And these cats were not what we call feral, they were just community cats because this lady had passed away. They weren't feral, so we were able to trap them and just pick up some of them even, and we were able to find them new homes. So this, you know, some of the cats are friendly in that we can find them homes. But um, if you look around, uh, I'm sure you'll probably see some feral cats. I, it, it, Unbelievable. Um, there's a place, uh, there's an apartment complex where there's quite a few, a, a large community of them. And um, they've all been spayed and neutered thanks to some grants that had been given to the Paws Clinic. Um, just to let you know, if you do have any kids that are feral that you've taken a live trap, uh, right now, I don't know how long it'll go on, but they are spayed spaying, neutering, vaccinating, and also giving a cap start, which kills the fleas uh, from anywhere from 24 to 48 hours, all of that for $10. Wow. So it, it, it's, a, it's a real bargain. You don't have to worry about, you know, maybe this cat having more kittens, because I talked to a lot of people that say, oh, they had one cat, it had kittens, and now they had kittens, had kittens. So, um, I hate to say this, you know, I'm a real uh, pet lover, and um, there's so many cats out there that a lot of times our shelters will not even accept anymore. Yeah. So at that point, you know, people are kind of lost. They don't know what to do. So hopefully with this TNR, it'll help take care of part of that situation. As far as finding you some feral cats, I'd love to be able to bring you some. And, um, but you can relocate them. But it's really not a good solution. Um, more than 50% of those cats that are relocated say somebody doesn't want them. Um, usually 50% um, die trying to get back to the original location. 